Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Welcome into a Saturday Checkdown episode of Purple Daily, where we'll just give you a little, little, little checkdown, short conversation to say hi on a weekend. Because this show never stops. It never sleeps, even during the offseason. And we have some great research from one of our loyal listeners as kind of a spillover from Feedback Friday on the history of Vikings drafts that we're going to get into, quarterback related. But this checkdown episode is powered in part by our friends at Ugly Deck, whose mission is to eliminate all of the ugly decks around the upper Midwest. And that is what they're doing deck by deck. Look at the right there. Ugly deck means gorgeous deck, and springtime means one thing. That means deck time. A new deck from UglyDeck.com. Install or DIY UglyDeck.com, offering up to $1,000. That's right, $1,000 off for a limited time. With install, you get the best carpenters. With DIY, you get the best coaches to help you from start to finish, and you save big. They will install. They'll help you every step of the way installing the ledger free estimates in a showroom with gorgeous maintenance uh free decking and railing look uglydeck.com is the place to go it is springtime and you're thinking to yourself you know what gonna spend a lot of time outside but what i need is i need a new gorgeous deck and that is where uglydeck.com comes in so check them out uglydeck.com i guarantee you'll be satisfied and you'll be loving that new deck yeah amen so jared halverson sends a note to the show here through the uh, feedback tab in the Score North app. He says, this was mentioned a few times recently on Purple Daily. The Vikings have never drafted a quarterback in the top 10 in franchise history. And we have mentioned that before. But he says, curious about this, I dove into pro football reference and reviewed draft classes starting in 1969. Yep. The Vikings and the Broncos are the only two franchises who have not drafted a quarterback in the top 10 There's an asterisk here. The Broncos swung a trade with the Colts for Elway six days after the 1983 draft. Or 84, 83 draft, right? Uh, But but the Colts drafted him ultimately, and then the trade came to fruition a few days later, so I'm inclined to give them partial credit. On a side note, the Baltimore Indianapolis Colts had seven selections of top 10 quarterbacks since 1969. The Bengals... Oilers slash Titans have had six top 10 quarterbacks in their franchise's history. So that's incredible. And by the way, the Broncos and the Vikings could both pretty easily just move up a couple spots and and grab a top 10 quarterback this year. But isn't that 60 plus year? Well, he went back to 1969, but it, it stands for the franchise history going back to 61. They've never selected a quarterback in the top 10 before. It's absolutely, it, it's incredible. It's two things though, right? And we've discussed one, which is this franchise, you know, especially since w- when he started in uh, 1969, has never been consistently bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now, the Norm Van Brocklin years, 61 through what, 66, they were because they were an expansion team. They didn't draft a QB then. Now, of course, that's a different world. 67, Grant gets here, the team upticks and, you know, dominated the then NFC Central in the 70s, but you would have thought at some point in time, if nothing else, you trade into the top 10, right? And and the real incredible thing is, Fran Tarkington, could, I think, can be the only quarterback safely called a franchise QB. If I'm not mistaken, he was like a third-round pick in 61 out of Georgia, and he had been retired since 1978, yeah. and the closest that you've come to a top 10 QB is Dante Culpepper, who you got... Uh, the right to the 11th overall pick in ni- in 99 from Washington in the Brad Johnson trade. So, yes, it is remarkable. And I do think the Elway factor with the Broncos um, certainly, like, changes that. Because Baltimore, Baltimore took him, but the story then, it, it was basically the Eli Manning pick. Uh, 20 some odd years or so before that, which is Elway had made it clear he was not playing for Baltimore. Yeah. So, so the Vikings, in my opinion, really stand as the only team with the, with the record of never having drafted and or bit and or take, you know, been in a position to trade for a top 10 QB when that guy is 
a rookie. It is, it's still hard for me to fathom that that has never happened. So, okay, here's a fun question for you guys. I just found a list of all of the quarterbacks the Vikings have drafted in their franchise history. I'm going to speed through this list. And at the end of it, I want us to rank the top 10 quarterbacks the Vikings have drafted. Okay. So keep in mind, this list is not going to include Favre, uh, Cunningham, Warren Moon, like a lot of the guys that we will rank as right as top quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins might be the second or third. People would say he's like the second best quarterback in franchise history. Yep. So we're going to rank the top 10. So just make notes of some of these guys. Yep. Dante Culpepper, Christian Ponder, Tommy Kramer, Fran Tarkenton. He was a third round pick, right, in 1978. 61. Or 61. Yep, sorry. Yep. 78 was his last TK year. was a first round. Craig, Kramer's a first round pick. Yep, in Kramer was a first round pick. Teddy Bridgewater. Yep. Bill Capelman in 1970, second round pick. T Jack. Capelman. Okay. Kellen Mond, Mike Wells, Steve Dills. John Hankinson, Chad May, John David Booty, Steve Bono, yep. Jaron Hall, Gino Toretta, Wade Wilson, Tyler Thigpen, Brad Johnson, Nate Stanley, Mike McFarland in 19... He was a 20th round pick in 1961. Yeah, I never... Oh, I don't seem to recall Mike. <laughs> Brian Dowling, Bill Salmon, Salmon, Salmon. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna play here. Yep. Brent Pease, Jim Haney, Neil Graff, and Bob Lee was a was a 17th round pick in 1968. Bob Lee was a backup. He played a lot, actually. Not to be confused with outside the lines ESPN Bob Lee. No, that, that's the more serious Bob Lee. What's percolating around Vikings training camp today, Tom Pelissero? Percolating? Never Bob, you never want to see Bob Lee. If he, he literally one time, he, he literally the, the, the day Brett the Brett Favre news came down in 2010, he put Tom Pelissero on from training camp, and his first question was, "What's percolating out at Vikings practice today?" Like, what is percolating? Tom, Tom should have said, "Me hungover." <laughs> my, my stomach's been percolating since about <laughs> yeah, three in the you morning. You want to know what's percolating, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> okay, out of that list, we have to make a top ten. Okay, I'm, I'm going through it right now. I, I, I will well, say. Well, Fred Tarkenton's number one. Right? Yeah, I actually, oh, I yeah. personally think one through five is pretty easy here. Six through ten, you can just pick names out of a hat. <laughs> okay, Person. who's number two? I think Dante's two, but I, I wouldn't fight if you said Kramer. But I think Dante's two. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dante had a better peak. Kramer was it's better there for like 14 years. Longevity. Yeah. No. Yep. I think it's Dante. That's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. So and Dante's, then Kramer is three. Yep, Kramer three. Is Teddy four? No, I think Brad Johnson's four. Brad Johnson. Oh, you did, we did have count Brad Johnson. Okay, yeah. A, Brad ninth, a ninth round pick in 1992. Yep. Big bad Teddy, Brad. Teddy's yeah. five, though. Teddy's five. Okay, yeah. I mean, cool. and then Declan, you're right. I mean, TJ, T. Jackson in the second 10. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm cow. just saying he's, he's yeah, got to no, be. you're right. You're, okay, you're right. for the second 10. For the second 10. Is Wade T. Wilson? T-Jack. Wade, Wil Wade Wilson's probably... Uh, Above hey, T-Jack. Yeah, he's probably six. Yeah. T-Jack seven, Bob Lee eight. I mean, I'm just Steve going through. Jack. This is Steve Dill. Steve Dills? Yeah, Steve Dills and Steve Bono. Bono is, went on to play for. He played for, like for the 49ers. 49ers, right? yeah, good memory, yeah. So Steve, cool. Steve Dills actually started 12 games in 1983. Yep. They went five and seven. He also started a few games in like the early eighties, like before then. Yeah, Steve Dill's probably in in that list. Very in, good, man. In the end of, but it's not. How many good. more do we need? We need we need three more after T Jack. Wait, so, got... so we got Wade Wilson. We have we have Fran Tarkenton, One, two, Dante Culpepper, Tommy Kramer, Brad Johnson, oh, Teddy Bob, Bridgewater, Wade Bob Wilson, Lee. T Jack, Bob Lee's and Bob Lee. Is probably eight or nine. You got to tell us about Bob Lee because that's way. Bob Lee was a backup, but, but but he came in. Um, I I want to say he got a he got some run. It was after Tark got traded as well. He started way fewer games than Steve Dills. Okay, well then let's put Dills eight, Bob Lee nine. I'm just saying it's to what Declan said. This he's is right. Wild. Like the end of the list is awful. It's okay, a testament. Steve Dills, Bob Lee. Yep, and. Is Tyler Thigpen started for a, for like the Bills for a while, right? Or the Chiefs or somebody. Is it Ponder? 
It's Ponder. ponder it's Ponder. It's Ponder 10. It's Christian Ponder. Oh my God. This is a great exercise, by the way. This is scarier than. Does this make you. Oh my God. Does this make you actually not want to draft a quarterback? No. They, I think they finally <laughs> got the guys that can draft them. This, this to me speaks to the people doing the drafting, right? I'm trying to make sure we don't, didn't snub anybody here. Uh, on Steve Bono, I'm pretty sure he was the third string quarterback in San Francisco behind Joe Montana and Steve Young at one point. Yeah, he was like in the late okay. 80s. Yeah. He he didn't really play for the Vikings. But then he was, oh, I forgot about this. In 1995, so the the Chiefs basically went like they've spent they spent like 15 years just taking San Francisco's leftovers. So they took Joe Montana after he was kind of done with the Niners. Then they took Steve Bono. Yep. Then they took Alex yep. Smith down the road, right? In 1995, Steve Bono started all 16 games for a 13-win Chiefs team. He was a pro bowler. He had three fourth-quarter comebacks, which led the league. 21 touchdowns, 10 picks. Pretty good, Steve Bono. Now, if I was if I was going to um, try for one uh, backdoor situation here, it would be Rich Gannon because he was drafted by the Patriots, but, but the Patriots, I think we're going to – move him to like running back or receiver or something. And he was quickly then traded because he refused to the Vikings before the first season. So, like, yeah. So I think it was before his first year. So my point is it, it was, uh, it was in a very, very small way. Elway ask of I'm yeah. not playing here. And the Vikings went out and acquired him. And the sad thing is the Vikings never really gave him the chance that he clearly deserved. Yeah. Cause he became an MVP like 10 years later. The other, the other name that we kind of tossed out there was the seventh rounder from Coastal Carolina, Tyler Thigpen, who who was he was a camp arm for the Vikings that flashed enough in the joint practices with the Chiefs. Yeah. The Vikings tried to sneak him through waivers to their practice squad. The Chiefs claimed him, put him on their roster as a backup. And in year two, I think it was, he started most of the season for a one in whatever. He was one in ten as as the starting quarterback of the Chiefs. But um that was the end for Tyler Thigpen. I was yep. forced to start him in a fantasy football season that year due to an <laughs> insane quarterback injury and bye week hell situation. And actually, I think he put up like 12 or points. And I was like, you know what? If you Good get enough. 12 points in fantasy football from Tyler Thigpen, you take it and you run away. The Vikings actually tried to bring him back when he signed with Buffalo. Oh, really? They, they were in contention to sign him. And I think his choice was between coming back here and the Bills. And he picked the Bills. Yep. It's but amazing, man, man, six through ten is that's frightening. That's I've never even come close to doing this before. John David oh. Booty, number one in my heart, though. Number one in my heart. He can't be that old. Could, could he still sling it in like the UFL, John David Booty? <laughs> Maybe. If I guess I'm that was kind of long. Heart. It was 2008. It was kind of a long time. Ago. If I'm not mistaken, the JD uh, B pick was obtained in a rare Vikings Packers trade. And I want to say that the Packers then used the pick that they got from the Vikings to take uh, Flynn, the quarterback. I think it was Flynn, Matt right? Flynn. Who, Matt Flynn, who signed with Seattle and was supposed to be the starter before they drafted Russell Wilson. Hmm. But I know that he was obtained. I know that his pick was obtained in a like fifth round trade, like a swap of sorts with the Packers. Yeah. So, okay. John David Booty, now that we're down this rabbit hole. John David Booty was, he spent nine years as an executive vice president of a real estate group in Irvine, California. And nice. now apparently he's an executive vice president at a different real estate group. So he has gotten into the, the real estate game for him. over the past 10 years. His, his brother was a football quarterback and a baseball player, right? D didn't his brother play like in the Marlins organization? I, I, I don't remember that. I'm Hold not on sure. A second here, I'm going to look that up. <laughs> We're so far down exactly. a John David Booty rabbit hole. I, right I want to say his. This is great for me. I want to say his brother played in like the Marlins or organization and was thought to be a pretty decent prospect at one point. Okay. So he does have an active Instagram profile. Yes, Judd, with you are 39 right. now. 1400 followers. Judd, you are correct. His brother Josh uh, played uh, in the that, Marlins system. Okay. Thank oh, you. Josh. Josh Booty. Yeah. Josh Booty. See there. See. I Phil? do remember that name. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, so yeah, the Vikings. Uh, not much of a history drafting quarterbacks is the the moral here. Hey, it's got to change at some point. Been sixty some odd years.
if John David Booty ever came to the Twin Cities, because I'm looking at his Instagram profile, he does love to golf, or at least there's like a couple photos. Maybe he lives on a golf course. Where in the Twin Cities, Declan, could he maybe uh, bring the sticks to? I would go to the Meadows at Mystic Lake. So our friends actually at the Meadows are giving a monthly giveaway here. So they're teaming up with Mystic Lake, and they're giving away a one stay and play golf package for four people each month all season. So prizes include two rounds of golf with cart at the Meadows and one night stay at Mystic Lake Casino for four. And for your chance to win, all you have to do is download the Score North app and listen to your favorite content and register there in the listener rewards tab. Uh, yeah, again, a what a one stay and play golf package for four each month at the Meadows at Mystic Lake, one of the best places to go and get a round in. And they just announced that they're finally opening this weekend. So shout out to the Meadows at Mystic Lake and enter that through the Score North app. Awesome. Awesome. All right. There's your Saturday check down edition of Purple Daily here, also presented by Quick Trip. Um, we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Dex has Ventline tomorrow and then another full week of glorious offseason fodder and speculation as we lead toward April 25th draft party at the Fillmore.